You know, if you consult a nutritionist and ask about what you should ideally be eating every day, more often than not, you'll be advised to have a balanced diet. You need a good share of carbs and protein, but a little bit of sugar is not bad either. Similarly, it's said that in your investment portfolio, diversification is a good strategy to follow. And that brings us to multi-asset funds. My first guest today will tell you everything that you need to know about it. Santosh Navlani, Chief Operating Officer of ET Money, is joining us. Thank you so much, Santosh, as always, for taking the time. Good evening to you. Let's start with the most basic question. What are multi-asset funds? So I love the analogy, uh, Alex, you gave about a balanced diet. Uh, I think everybody wants one, but uh, rarely people get one. Uh, but you no, know, unfortunately, fortunately, in mutual funds or world of investments, it's not as tough. And I know the moment we get to know how to go and buy it. Uh, so uh, typically, individual investors like you and me uh, have only a few asset classes at our disposal: equity, debt, gold, real estate, maybe crypto these days uh, as well. Uh, and and uh, one of the difficult part about investments is when to buy what asset class in how much proportion. And if you want to really outsource this job to a fund manager and actually go and uh, aim for steady returns, balanced returns in every kind of market, uh, short term, medium term, long term, then multi-asset funds are your best bet. Uh, they actually uh, give you exposure to uh, three asset classes into one fund. Uh, so I typically call them like three in one fund, uh, so to speak. It's like you actually have uh, domestic equity allocation in them. You have gold, you have debt. And the fund manager, depending on the market scenario, actually uh, either increases allocation specific asset class or reduces or basically maintains uh, a minimum allocation each of them and creates a very steady uh, uh, and balanced returns experience for people. Uh, as per SEBI's definition of multi-asset funds in the country, uh, uh, any fund which actually maintains at least 10% allocation to each of the asset class of equity, debt, and gold uh, is classified as multi-asset fund. Uh, so you would typically find a lot of funds in the in, in the space who actually are sometimes running more of quasi you know aggressive hybrid fund by having a lot of portion towards equity uh in, a, in all market scenarios that may not be good but so to speak people have allocations possible in all these as a classes into one fund called multi-asset just those three right uh, fund managers have taken the liberty to expand that to other assets as well uh, could you also take us through some of the other assets that have been invested in and the forms that they invested in? Yeah, so some of the uh, some of the funds, uh, I think SBI and Nippon, uh, uh, their respective uh, multi-asset funds actually have interestingly allocation to uh, international equity as, as an asset class as well, which is amazing uh, in, in that sense. People actually uh, uh, get benefit of almost four in one asset class. Uh, they are actually three, but the version of equity can be domestic and international as well. So Nippon actually has about 20% allocation towards uh, international equities in their multi-asset fund. SBI has, has some allocation. There are some assets, uh, some fund managers actually having interestingly inwits and in REITs uh, uh, as uh, uh, replacement of fixed income or real estate uh, as an asset class as well. Uh, so these are interesting uh, kind of fund offerings to go for. Uh, but ultimately, one looks for steady returns and it can be a combination of three asset classes or four asset classes, but the result is going to be same. Uh, more of a steady returns in all kind of market uh, market scenarios. Interest. There is one more fund uh, in the marketplace uh, by by Motila Roswal mutual fund company where they actually have this interesting uh, uh, passive way of building a multi asset portfolio where they have two options for people: an aggressive fund of fund and a conservative fund of fund. They are not classified as multi asset funds, but they actually are multi asset fund in scenario where they allocate fixed uh, static allocation towards. Uh, Nifty 500 index funds, S&P 500 uh, index fund of US, uh, domestic uh, GSEC uh, uh, for fixed income and 10% uh, uh, allocation to gold as well. Uh, as of now, the international investments are stopped, so this fund is not accepting allocations, but uh, it actually is a, is a great replacement for multi-asset fund as well. Why would you use a multi-asset? I think to a certain extent, we have spoken about the use case, but why would an individual look at a multi-asset fund? What place would it hold in an individual's portfolio? 
Yeah, so uh, Alex, I think uh, all of us are running multi-asset portfolios uh, in our own monies. Uh, if we go and introspect deeper, all of us uh, or most of us uh, would have some allocation towards equity and either in the form of direct equities or, or mutual funds. Uh, we will have allocation towards fixed income via fixed deposits, bonds, or maybe debt mutual funds. We'll have allocation to gold by having physical gold. Uh, in our homes or maybe digital gold or digital uh, or gold mutual funds as we can call them and we'll probably have a location towards real estate as well maybe in the form of REITs or having physical land or our houses the fact is we are all running multi-asset portfolios uh, unknowingly just that when you bring some structure to it, uh, it it actually can do much better job to your investment portfolio than that and multi-asset funds actually do that job of organizing your investments into different asset classes in the right strategy and uh, uh, there is a reason that you should have this approach uh, or diversified balance portfolio always in life because not all asset classes rise together and fall together. Um, in fact, uh, equity uh, is negatively correlated with gold and debt or rather debt and gold are negatively correlated to equities in that sense. So when equity typically is in bull phase, chances are very high gold is not rising along with equity. Uh, when equity is in a, in a, in a uh, kind of bust phase or it is falling like a crazy market as we saw in last uh, few days, uh, you would probably see gold outperforming. In fact, if you see last six month returns, uh, just an ex as an example, uh, Nifty has given a negative return of about six percentage points, if I can say that. And uh, uh, gold uh, probably has given about 10% uh, uh, positive return. So we basically have seen in reality right now it's shaping up where gold actually has given a, a positive return where equity is not. So uh, typically when uh, when you access the reality that all asset classes are not positively correlated, uh, some of them are negatively correlated. And if you want a steady experience where in your portfolio, there is somebody who's giving you returns uh, while somebody is giving stability or somebody is giving you returns while other, other asset classes falling, then multi-asset funds actually do that job pretty well for you. Uh, and, and just to elucidate your point, over the last couple of years when you've had a bull run in global equities because of easy monetary policy, you've had yields that have been subdued and therefore fixed income has not given you the kind of returns. Maybe towards the start when yields were falling, that was good. But by and large, debt funds have not done as well as they've done in the past. And on the yeah. other hand, you had equity that has outperformed. But why don't we roll back and take a longer view of things, uh, Santosh? Over the longer period, would you still say that multi-asset has done its job, has outperformed? So, uh, Alex, as of now, India is just seeing a kind of, you know, uh, entry or other interest in this category. I'm sure products will get better. Uh, but if you look at the objective behind these funds, uh, it's actually quite noble. Uh, they are neither equity funds nor they are debt funds. So what does it mean? Like, you know, debt funds typically will only protect your purchasing power, if not just beat inflation by a slight amount. Uh, equity as an asset class gives you long-term wealth creation potential where uh, you actually are trumping inflation by uh, almost double digit return in that sense or a very high single digit return in the long run. Uh, but when equity comes with a lot of ups and downs and debt basically has a steady uh, kind of protection of purchasing power at max, what does multi-asset do? They exactly fall in between. By combining uh, multiple assets into one fund, they actually hope to or rather aim to give you uh, somewhere in exactly middle of equity and debt kind of returns. So uh, if you really want, and if you really want uh, uh, returns, which you want, like you are looking for debt uh, plus plus returns, but not at the cost of ups and downs of equity, then multi-asset funds are pretty good job for you. A pretty good, they do pretty good job for that aspect. So if you, uh, uh, it's basically a, a, somebody expecting or prioritizing a steady return than, uh, than, uh, uh, and, and deprioritizing ups and downs it that come along in equity returns. And uh, again, uh, we can get, take a step back, as you mentioned, for over long run. Uh, uh, and we've spoken about this in, in, in the past as well. If you look at 2008 global financial crisis, uh, it didn't matter whether you had the best equity fund or the best stock. What mattered uh, whether you had gold uh, in the next subsequent years in your portfolio, when gold actually had a secular bull run for almost three, four years together. And it 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 gave a phenomenal return uh, to people who were investors in gold. Uh, it's the same thing happened in, in the uh, 2020 as well, where while equity markets actually were probably flattish, 
uh, or very small single digit returns depending on the fund you bought. But gold as an asset class actually gave you almost 20% return in 2020. Why? Because when the when people when when the markets were falling like crazy in February and March, gold actually was became a safe haven and a hedge for many of people, many of the people as a as a, as a you know asset of last resort. And gold actually gave very good returns. So what happens is you would not know as an investor which asset class is actually going to bear the brunt of uh, a bull run in the end, or what kind of asset class is going to sort of see certain disinterest and uh, being at the mercy of an asset class to give returns for your portfolio in in real life. You you are better off by having a diversified approach to uh, 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 your investments and multi-asset funds can do a good job, though you can build your own multi-asset strategy and run it in a very strategic manner or an on a, on a organized manner and probably get better returns for yourself than multi-asset funds as well. Okay, I, I get that. If But if you were to say that you are going to utilize multi-asset funds in your overall, in your overall strategy, um, uh, we've often talked about layering your uh, investment portfolio on the equity side you're talking about a core versus a satellite allocation right uh, but in this case because you have allocation to multiple assets strategically what part of your portfolio would it fill would it be the core of your portfolio uh, so uh, given the way multi-asset funds are uh, run in the country i wouldn't really go and say that they should become core part of your portfolio uh, alex uh, while the intent is right uh, uh, from a regulatory st structure standpoint that provide an option to investors where at least 10 percent of the assets are invested in uh, in uh, in each of the asset class of equity debt and gold and maybe international as well what happens is the moment you run these funds as uh, you know, focused on one asset class of equity with uh, bias towards equity all the time, they start giving you uh, more or less uh, same kind of uh, ups and downs experience uh, uh, for investors. And if gold is always just lying 10%, then you're not really buying a multi-asset portfolio. You're just basically uh, allocating some portion of your money uh, to uh, to kind of, you know, as a currency risk, a hedge against currency risk and a hedge against inflation kind of stuff. So they may not be uh, at a state where you can actually look at them as a core part of your portfolio. One can look at that aspect as a way that if you want to allocate 5% of your portfolio to gold, instead of buying gold, you may be allocating like uh, some percentage higher than that as a multi-asset fund. And you will get a experience of fixed income, equity and gold in, 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 in your portfolio. So I wouldn't say core yet. But yeah, this can become a good strategy for you to really uh, protect some part of your portfolio and aim for a steady return in the long run. Uh, when we were discussing what asset classes these mutual funds invest in, uh, and since it's an active strategy, uh, mutual funds have different interpretations of what a multi-asset should be. So therefore, from the, ex from the perspective of the investor, how would you go about choosing the fund uh, that you want to invest in and what are the parameters that you need to bear in mind because each one would approach for example equity investing also differently they might have a different strategy right yeah so uh, if if uh, typically multi asset port for, uh, uh, kind of funds would not be advisable for short term investments because you wouldn't know which asset class uh, 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 performs better in the short run uh, and because these are typically debt taxation structure, you may be advised to really invest in at least three years or more horizon. So when you look for that kind of uh, longer term horizon, like three plus years, maybe sometimes five and seven years for these kind of funds, uh, you would typically want a diversified equity experience, uh, Alex. And uh, one should not be basically by like, selecting a fund which is being run for equity part as large cap fund all the time our uh, debt portion of the fund is actually uh, having uh, aspects towards you know taking more of an interest rate risk in the portfolio so if this fund's objective is run a steady ship uh, then you should look for a fund which has a location of equity as more of a flexible uh, like flexi cap fund uh, approach to it where you have mix of large cap mid cap small cap without any kind of biases uh, you should have uh, allocation towards debt in a way where the fund manager is not taking interest rate risk uh, too much in the portfolio or, or rather aiming for even having any amount of credit risk in the portfolio. So a good diversified approach to fixed income investing and equity investing is what you should look for uh, as a fund. And uh, a, a fund which actually is only allocating to gold uh, as 10 percent in irrespective of all market scenarios then this basically is not a good fund for you because then uh, the entire purpose of creating some kind of alpha in your portfolio by 
uh, increasing allocation to gold the right time or when the uh, market mood is is in favor of gold and you're only a, a stuck at 10% in gold then it will not be a good experience for you or you may not really get what you hoped for so look for a fund which actually is running a very dynamic strategy uh, across all these three asset classes actually allocating uh, or you know decreasing uh, uh, kind of you know exposure to gold with respect to market conditions will be good and one of the ways to look at that is compare the uh, annual returns of uh, each of the funds in the marketplace and see that which fund has at least uh, been able to beat fixed income fixed in income return uh, in each of the periods or maximum periods that means uh, if if a fund has beaten fixed income returns or debt mutual fund returns in each of the calendar year periods then you can actually expect or hope that this fund is being run as a multi asset fund and uh, that one of the those are the three or four checks you would probably look for uh, in selecting a fund Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.